The smack off is in eight days. And the guy who's become the mascot of the smack off is Grandpa Joe Bucket from Willy Wonka and the Char- Chocolate Factory by Rule Doll, as it turns out. And I feel like it's since it's golden ticket season, and I would really love to give one out. There's nothing better than I'd love that if Jim came back and money was like, guess what? I found two guys who are really going to compete in the smack off, gave them both golden tickets, but I won't. Every day we're talking about tickets, and we're playing Grandpa Joe singing about stealing his grandson's glory. I got a golden ticket. I got a golden ticket. I feel like it's the perfect time for a more thorough examination of Joe. We spent a lot of time on the show talking about the miracle recovery he makes from being bedridden and rubbing bunions with Grandpa George to jumping out of bed and literally dancing once his grandson wins, wins a ticket to the Magic Factory. It's a hell of a turnaround, and it's pathetic. We've covered it. What we really haven't covered about our Smack Off show mascot is that it's only a drop in the bucket, that whole quick jump out of bed. For the entire film, this man makes a series of self-serving and ignorant decisions, not just on his own behalf, but as it pertains to his grandson's safety and well-being. Let me show you what I mean. Do you remember the scene, the way this goes, the Wonka things are out, everyone's looking for the golden tickets, Charlie badly wants a Wonka bar, he gets one for his birthday, they scrape, and they find the money to buy one candy bar. He opens it, no ticket. And then late at night, there is a scene where Grandpa, what do you know? He's found another Wonka bar. Now, you might ask, how the hell did he afford a candy bar if he's not working and making no income? Check out what Charlie says to this son of a bitch when he gives him the candy bar. Grandpa, that money was for tobacco. I told you, Charlie, I've given it up. Go on, oh- I'm sorry, did, did I? The whole family is living in squalor. The mother is washing bed sheets with a paddle to make ends meet. They can't afford food. And Grandpa is packing tobacco money? Grandpa, that money was for tobacco. I told you, Charlie, I've given it up. Go on. I told you, Charlie, stop talking about that. Don't bring it up again. I've given it up. But, Grandpa, I, sm- I saw you smoking two lung darts behind the house yesterday. You crawled out of bed to smoke. No, no, I, those were. That was, it was lollipops. They were Wonka Pops, Charlie. Unbelievable, though. It, sorry, we, we only have some hot water and cabbage for dinner tonight because Grandpa had to buy a pouch of snuff with his tobacco money. Unbelievable. I got a pack of Marl Bros. Guy's packing tobacco money and they can barely eat. How long has he been having that tobacco money? Does his daughter know about it when she's changing his bedpan? And what other secret money is Grandpa Joe hiding? Grandpa, I can't take that money. You bought that with your racetrack money. Grandpa, that's your weed money. Grandpa, you know that's your hooker money. I can't accept that. Unbelievable if it was just that. Then they show up to the factory. Everybody is excited. It's a dream come true. The whole world is watching. And the first thing Weird Wonka wants them to do is sign that unreadable contract, the one that the small print at the bottom. Now, if you're a responsible parent, you're not letting your child sign something you can't even read from some pedo freak in his factory. You're not doing it. And all the other parents react that way. Mr. Salt says no way, and Mr. Beauregard reacts exactly as a parent should. Hold it. Let me through here, you kids. Violet, baby, don't you sign anything there. What's this all about? Of course. I'm not signing that contract. I don't know what it says. I don't know what he's signing his life over to you. But what does Grandpa Joe do? The man who is entrusted with the well-being of a child for the day. Do his protective instincts kick in? Let's find out. What about me, Grandpa? Sign away, Charlie. We got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, right? Except the entire factory. Except that that contract comes back to bite Charlie in the ass at the end of the day. Sign away, Charlie! What could possibly go wrong? I don't know, Grandpa, shouldn't we read it or something? I don't even know what that says. Who cares? Sign away! away, Way to think it through. Way to think it through, Joe. I know that at that point of the tour, you were already halfway through your hip flask that you filled with your wild turkey money. But you just ruined your grandson's entire future. Sign away, it comes back to ruin you at the end of the movie. And speaking of drinking, how about when Joe and Charlie get to the fizzy lifting drinks? I mean, you had Grandpa Joe at drinks. Here's how Wonka describes the fizzy lifting drinks. Fizzy lifting drinks. They fill you with gas, and the gas is so terrifically lifting that it lifts you right off the ground like a balloon. That sounds like something you want your kid to try. What is Charlie, 10 years old? Something that lifts him off the ground that even the sick chocolate master discourages you from drinking. Can't discourage Joe. Charlie's guardian decides to hang back, just take a big old pull off the bottle with the kid. Oh, but Grandpa, didn't Mr. Wonka say we shouldn't drink it? Drink away, Charlie. You got nothing to lose. 
And guess up, guess what? Guess what happened? Guess how that ended up? Help! We're by the van! Stay away from Charlie, it'll top us to bits. We're in trouble, Charlie. I can't stop. It's pulling me in. I can't stop. I can't stop. What do we do? You can't stop drinking and smoking and cheating. That's what he said at his AA meeting. I can't stop. I can't stop. The reason you're in trouble, you and your grandson are about to get beheaded because you ditched the tour like some burnouts on a high school field trip to go drink. I mean, you, you didn't want to go to the next magic room and miss out what was going to happen. You just stay just because you saw one bottle that you weren't supposed to have. You and your grandson are getting hammered together. And lastly, just to tag the worst family day of all time, I mean, the Dugars are embarrassed by Joe Bucket. And just when you think he can't do any worse, Willy Wonka gives Charlie one last test. Mr. Wonka acts like a jerk. He screams at them, that whole routine, good day, sir! Because he wants to see if Charlie will bring back the gobstopper. He's being the puppet master. He's laying down a psychological test. He needs to know if he can trust Charlie. He walks out with the gobstopper, can't do it. Gives it back, he gets the factory. And what does Grandpa Joe think about the second Willie lays down that gauntlet? Getting paid. Come on, Charlie. Let's get out of here. I'll get even with him if it's the last thing I ever do. Slugworth wants a gobstopper. He'll get one. What an idiot. Sure, Charlie, taking that piece of candy will make all your dreams come true if you bring it back to the factory man. But let's run off to Slugworth and make a quick buck. You're going to get this major metropolitan factory and a company and a brand worth billions of dollars. But hey, that weird man in the alley offered us like 400 bucks to give him a piece of candy. Let's get it while we can. Why do I feel anyway that Joe would be the one taking that slug worth money? Why do I also feel like he'd be taking it to the nearest OTB? Horrible. So now you know. And that brings us back to the smack off eight days from now, next Friday, Don't be distracted by Joe being our singing mascot for getting a ticket. Be better than him, or you won't get in. Because he's not just the laziest man of all time. He is a parasitic chain smoker, the worst guardian ever, and the everlasting gravy trainer. That's who that is. Next time, maybe I get into Willy Wonka and how he's a slave-owning pedophile. I got that in me, too. But we don't have the time, and we got to stay to, to the scripts here that say we're supposed to talk about sports because talk sports guy's going to come in. You know, my thoughts on him.